Think about your favorite movie. Is it in your head? Think about what makes it your favorite movie. Is it that one movie that can always make you laugh? Or conversely, is it that one that can always make you cry? Either way, a well-made film can always provoke some sort of emotion out of the viewer. Today I'm going to be reviewing four films that share a single common element. The films all star a person with a specific disability. Two of these are documentaries, which gives the viewer a look into the lives of real people in real situations, while the other two films are fiction, created in a studio using actors and scripts. How does Hollywood present disabilities as compared to the real thing? How well do actors act out the role of a person with a disability while remaining honest and unbiased? I first began by comparing the documentary Best Boy to the film I Am Sam. Best Boy is the look into the life of Philly, a 50-year-old man who is mentally retarded. He has lived his entire life with his elderly parents and has never been alone to experience the world outside. Philly's cousin, Ira, who is also the filmmaker, is concerned about what will happen to Philly when his parents pass. Ira talks Philly's parents into sending him to a school that is recognized for the care and support they provide their students. Philly begins to blossom as he makes new friends and learns to count money. Philly learns to become himself. After a year, Philly is able to attend a camping trip with his school, where he leaves his parents home for several days for the first time in his entire life. During the filming, Philly is told that his father has passed. This again presses for concern about what will happen when Philly's mother dies. She decides to place Philly in a group home, while he still has the support and love of his mother only a phone call away. Six months after he moved into the group home, his mother dies. Best Boy is a very simple, yet deep look into the life of a man and his family, period. This film accurately showed a man who is continuously learning to be self-reliant and the family who loves him and has helped him throughout his entire life. Although, Philly's parents are not without their frustrations. God wants to punish anybody, he should only punish them with retarded children. No, I mean it. Such a heartache, you don't know. Nobody should. Although Best Boy did have its lows, it also showed the soaring highs of an individual man and his family. It is a beautiful documentary, simply done without any hidden agenda or biased viewpoints. The fictional counterpoint that I chose for Best Boy was I Am Sam. I Am Sam is about Sam Dawson, a man who has the cognitive abilities of a seven year old. His daughter, Lucy, was taken away by social workers who felt that Sam would not be an appropriate father once Lucy mentally progressed past Sam. Sam then lucks out with a fast-paced attorney who wishes only to leave behind her money-hungry image. Instead, she learns a great deal about love and simplicity from Sam and begins to strengthen herself mentally as well as emotionally. While I enjoyed the endless Beatles references and the Rain Man callback character, I felt I Am Sam was unnecessarily emotional. Since the film covers three major issues, intellectual disabilities, single parenting, and foster parenting, it is obviously going to pull at the heartstrings. However, the sentiment throughout the entire film was extremely thick. I did think Sean Penn was an excellent choice to play Sam. Sean Penn, being the brilliant method actor that he is, was able to portray Sam fairly. His hand movements, along with the gleeful clapping, were not overdone or inappropriate. Penn was also able to accurately demonstrate the speech impairments typical of someone with cognitive disabilities. I also greatly enjoyed a particular clip in this film that accurately revealed how society behaves towards the labeling of people in certain groups. I didn't mean your handicap, I meant your, uh, your, your, your disability. I mean the fact that you're retarded. Oh, that's not the right word. I don't know what to call you. Sam, you can call me Sam. The negative media portrayal in I Am Sam isn't through the actor playing Sam, but through other elements of the film. For example, the courts and the social workers are portrayed as angry and unfulfilled, and those who will never understand that love is what it takes to take care of a child. The film left no room for debate about the custody of Sam's daughter. Sam, as the biological parent, was automatically in the right, while Lucy's foster parents and the judicial system were automatically misguided. Sam and Philly have different daily needs and goals. This is the way real life goes, as no two people anywhere are alike, no matter what label groups them together. The next film I viewed was the documentary King Gimp. 
King Gimp begins with the focus of the film, artist Dan Keplinger, expressing how he interprets his unofficial title. Most people think Gimp means someone with a lame walk, but Gimp also means fighting spirit. Born with cerebral palsy, Dan Keplinger is followed by the filmmakers for 13 years. The viewer gets to see the life through the eyes of Dan, who is a remarkably gifted artist and thinker. He struggles throughout life to show people that he is not someone to be written off and forgotten about. When he is accepted into the Towson University art program, one art instructor told him, to his face, that you will never be an artist. Telling a determined person that they will never make it in their chosen field will only fuel their passion. Another art instructor at the university, who was inspired by the determination and resolve Dan showed, took Dan under his wing and became his advisor. This helped the artistic talent in Dan flourish instead of flounder. As an artist, Dan's talent is real and unsurpassed. He is able to show himself through his paintings and express something he is not able to communicate through words. That is the essence of art. This documentary is electrifying and unnerving at the same time. There is no doubt as to why King Gimp earned its Oscar. It is an inspiring and hopeful film that is ageless in its essence. The next film I reviewed was My Left Foot. My Left Foot is the story of Christy Brown, an author and artist. Christy Brown was born with cerebral palsy and was unable to communicate or move uninhibitedly. Through the patience and support of family and doctors, Christy learns to communicate and demonstrate his intellect. By using the only part of his body that he can control freely, Christy paints, writes, and even selects and plays records. Through the use of flashbacks, the film simply tells the story of a man and artist who just so happens to have cerebral palsy. Daniel Day-Lewis won an Oscar for his performance in My Left Foot, and with good cause. His voice is throaty and with a perfect Irish accent. His facial movements show determination as well as frustration. Day-Lewis is able to show Christy Brown honestly and passionately. My favorite scene was the pub scene in which Christy defends his father's memory while proving he isn't what you think he is. I don't fight cripples. This is the essence of the film, the life of an interesting and complex man and artist, and nothing more. The fact that he was born with cerebral palsy is only a part of the many layers that make up Christy Brown, and Day-Lewis was able to capture a spot-on portrayal of this man. Like King Gimp, My Left Foot emphasizes the need to look past the label and see the person. While many thought both Dan Keplinger and Christy Brown should have been institutionalized, both men were able to prove their intellectual capabilities and their value through determination. The two men then became artists, masters of self-expression and representational thought. Throughout these films, there are two themes that seem to reoccur the implications of labeling, as well as the importance of education. While the men in these films were all given a label, they all had their own unique and interesting personalities. It is unfair to any of them to recognize them only in the context of said label. The importance of education was a less pronounced theme. However, it was evident in every film. Philly began to blossom as a person when he started attending a school that had a strong support system for not only him, but his family. Dan was told he would never be an artist and was initially written off by his educators. The care that one educator showed Dan helped to bring out the artistic talent inside of him. These films are significant, each in their own ways. They're not only useful learning tools, but they are also beautifully composed pieces of art that show the lives of people that we might have never seen before. This is the purpose of continual learning, always learning, always growing. Thanks for sitting down and watching this entire thing with me. My references are the film Best Boy, My Left Foot, I Am Sam, and photos from Dan Keplinger's website, kinggimp.com. Thank you.